All right, guys, so we have a carryover tube to replace on a York burner. Now, this is a two-stage burner. Only the first stage runs. It's a long story why, but the second stage is disconnected. Like I said, long story why. But the first stage is not lighting. And what I find is the carryover tube in these things, they become a problem. They don't distribute gas properly for the pilot, and it doesn't light off. And you can take them out and clean them sometimes and it works, but I find replacing them is the best course of action here. So that's what we're gonna do on this particular machine today. So here's the burner here. Okay, the bottom one is the second stage. Top one is the first stage. Now the bottom one's not being used at all. It's, it's fully disconnected. Okay, gas is off of the gas valve. The, it's disabled electrically as well. Now the top one here, when it goes to light, the pilot, it's not being, distributed evenly across the pilot tubing or the runner tube and because of that the flame sensor is not picking up and it's not going to main flame so we are going to replace the pilot tube right here now what can happen is these holes are really really fine and small and what can happen is if the pilot tube gets some stuff inside of it and it starts blocking up these holes it can cause an issue now, yeah yeah you can take them out you can blow it out you can clean it but I find if you're gonna take it out you might as well just get a new tube and stick it in because it's going to help the longevity of the machine. It's going to help it run better. You don't want callbacks in the middle of the winter time and whatnot. So we're going to replace this entire tube. All right, so now the burner's out. Pretty simple to take out. It's just a union, disconnect some wires from the gas valve and the flame sensor and the spark igniter. You remove those, you can pull the burner right out, just a union and a couple of screws. So here is the existing pilot tube runner tube and you can see why you can see why we might have issues with gas distribution and you can see why I'm gonna change it and I'm also gonna change the igniter the sparker right here and the flame sensor which is down here because that's not in very good shape either so we're gonna change both of those along with the tubing here and we're gonna get this machine back up and running Okay, so now what you guys want to do is when you remove this tubing, there's an orifice in here that is basically crimped onto the tubing right here. So when we take this apart, you're going to see the orifice. I recommend you get a brand new orifice every time you change one of these. They're inexpensive and it gives you insurance that the machine's going to run better. Here is the orifice here. Here's what it looks like. So we're going to pull that one out. We're going to change this one as well. Now there's little little clips here or they're, they're kind of like nuts almost. So we got to spin those off as well to get this tubing off there's the other one back in there and when I'm done I don't put those back I like to get actual nuts okay and I'll get you the size I'll tell you the size in a bit when I put them back on but I, I like to get the actual nuts to put back in place rather than these clips all right so everything is out I got the pilot tube out I got the sensor the sparker out and the orifice out now these little clips here holding the uh, the tubing on they're a pain in the ass to get off once they start rusting like this because they don't turn very easily so what I did is I just took these Nipex or Knipex as I think you're supposed to say uh, 12 inch Cobras and I just ripped them right off these things were badass for that and the grip is phenomenal on the end of these so that's what I did I just ripped it right off and we're gonna go put this all back together okay, so now there's a nut and a washer on there we got to do the same for all of them much better than the original setup it's gonna hold it on much better and when you take it off it's gonna be a lot easier to take off that is 10-24 eighth of an inch nut on there so if you guys are interested picking up some nuts and some washers this is a better way to do it I think so here we go new flame sensor new pilot tube much better Okay, sparker right here and new orifice. So we're gonna slide this back in and we're gonna test it out. Okay, so the burner's back in, we're wired up. Good thing to do is take a picture of where the wires go. It's very easy to put them back afterwards. We still gotta take some zip ties and make everything nice and neat. The other thing we're gonna do here, and I preach this and I've made a video about this before, which I will put up there for you guys to click on, is roll out. Anytime I do a heating repair on one of these York rooftops, I always replace the rollout because they cause a lot of intermittent issues. Sometimes you actually have power going to the ignition module on the rollout terminal, okay? And it's still not firing up. As soon as you jump it out, it's fine. So intermittently they cause issues and it's an internal issue with the rollout itself, okay? Where it still looks like it's providing power, 
but there's something going on inside there that doesn't allow the current to flow through properly to the ignition module so it doesn't fire up. So we're changing that. And because this unit runs pretty much all winter long, because it's on the northeast corner of the warehouse, um, it's a pharma warehouse, it runs all year long pretty much. And because of the intermittent issues I've had, with this burner lighting. I'm also gonna replace the ignition module. It's a very, very inexpensive insurance for this machine to run because what happens if this machine fails in the middle of the winter, their sensors go off, they have temperature excursions, the product could be in risk of being damaged. Okay, so very inexpensive insurance for an older ignition module. This thing's probably about six years old now, so I'm gonna get it changed out along with the other parts and we're gonna insure 99.9%, .9%, not always 100, that we're gonna have this machine running in heat all winter long without any issues. Okay, so we got some problems here. Everything's back together. The brand new ignition control is in, but it's not firing. We have power to TH and roll out. What I did was I took the rollout off and jumped it out just to make sure the rollout wasn't a problem. Okay, so we might potentially have a warranty issue here on a brand new ignition control. Luckily, I have the old one still, but I also have a couple brand new other ones that are gonna go in some other machines. So I might try another brand new one out here, see how it goes. So after a little bit of head scratching, I found the problem why this thing wasn't firing up. This brand new sparker here inside, when you take the, uh, the heat shrink off, was barely even connected. So there was no resistance. It was open, so I could not create a spark and I could not light the gas. So I'm gonna change this sparker out and this should solve the problem. So after my repair, I noticed that there was a smell of gas, quite strong actually. So I grabbed the big blue, the dauber bottle, and if we go to this union right here, we can see it, it's, it's a pretty big leak and that's why the dauber sometimes is, is good because you can hold it right against where the leak is and it shows itself like that. Sometimes if you just coat it with soap and it's a big leak, it doesn't really show up. But as soon as you hold the dauber against it like you've seen before, there we go, you can see it bubbling through. All right, it's running now. see that vapor water vapor coming up and fogging up the camera so what happened was I put that new sparker in okay I was getting a really weak spark I could hear it I thought it might have been a ground issue I tried the ground in different spots that wasn't working so I pulled the sparker out I put it against ground like basically put it against the panel here and watched it spark it was a great spark but then I took the corner of the bracket and that was also sparking very very weak so that told me that that ceramic casing was leaking through onto the bracket, which was now creating the path to ground and causing it to spark. So when it's installed like that, basically I'm losing spark because now that spark is going to the, the actual bracket, holding up the sparker instead of down to the, the pilot tube where it's supposed to spark. So what I did was I taped it up. Okay, I taped up that bracket poked some holes in it and then screwed it back in. So now it's insulated from the bracket and the spark is now feeding itself down to the pilot tube and not dissipating, causing my weak spark. And if you guys hang on for a minute, I'll just play that video and post the picture there of how I taped it up just as an experiment, but it seemed to work. So that's it guys. Watch out for this in the future with sparkers because if there's any leaks to ground through them, you're gonna have spark issues okay happy hvac and guys i'm out